I want to comfort you with the words of Jesus. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. For in my Father's house there are many rooms. When I go there, I prepare one for you. And then I'll return to get you where I am. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you are. We don't know the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father except through me. We thank the Lord for those words of comfort. Now it's my privilege to introduce you to our church secretary. Lori, would you please come and share with us? Good morning, our church family. Miss you and love you. I just want to share my testimony. It's nothing spectacular. It's just what happened to me. I was brought up in the church, went for many, many years, very active in the choir. And, you know, I didn't give it a second thought that I just thought, okay, I'm a Christian because I go to church. Well, things changed throughout my life, and I stopped going for a many, many number of years. And, you know, things seemed to be okay, but um, things started to change for me. Think, you know, things that I didn't like started showing up and coming around. And I was around a lot of people that I didn't like being around. And then I had a dramatic change in my life where I didn't want to be here anymore. I just wanted to be gone. I had had enough of this world. I wanted to step off. And I made a bad decision and I was gonna drive my car off a cliff. And I remember sitting there with my car in drive, my foot on the brake, ready just to go over that cliff. And all of a sudden, the air around me just changed and I felt this hand on my shoulder. And I know it was God. God was there saying, I'm here, just ask, I'm here. He says, this is not what you need to do. He says, you know, your time is not up yet. I'm not through with you. I didn't really know that, you know, he had a plan for me, but in that moment, I backed my car up, put it in park, and turned off the engine and prayed to God right then and there. And my, my soul has been his ever since. And it's not been a regrettable moment. I know, you know, life still is hard, even when you're a Christian. You know, especially this day and time, you know, things of all different sorts are being thrown at us. But with God's help, we'll get through this. And I was reading my daily devotion this morning, and it's very fitting for everything that's going on right now. And I'd like to read it to you. Thankfulness opens the door to my presence. Though I am always with you, I have gone to great me measures to preserve your freedom of choice. I have placed a door between you and me, and I have empowered you to open or close that door. There are many ways to open it, but a grateful attitude is one of the most effective. Thankfulness is built on a substructure of trust. When thankful words stick in your throat, you need to check up on your foundation of trust. When thankfulness flows freely from your heart and lips, let your gratitude draw you closer to me. I want you to learn the art of giving thanks in all circumstances. See how many times you can thank me daily. This will awaken your awareness to a multitude of blessings. It will also cushion the impact of trials when they come against you. Practice my presence by practicing the dis discipline of thankfulness. Psalms 104, Psalms 31, 14, and 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Lori, for sharing your testimony with us. Let's be honest. These are dangerous, hazardous, perilous times. Very few of us have experienced anything like what we're going through right now. It's only human nature that we feel some anxiety since we face such an uncertain future. And we have conflicting messages from day to day to day to day. Fear of the unknown is to be expected even among those who have faith in Christ. I have fear once in a while. There's no easy way to get older. Things don't work like they once did. Your memory doesn't work. You run out of energy. And the news media is negative and upsetting. Sometimes you're afraid. Some fear is good. Fear of a spanking keeps a toddler from wandering into the street. Fear of falling keeps this old man off a ladder. Fear of a speeding ticket motivates us to drive more safely. Fear of contracting a virus leads us to wash our hands more frequently and to wear masks. Here's my mask. Oh. <laughs> it's a Lakers mask. Solomon said, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9, verse 10. The Apostle Paul said, one of the tall tale signs of a decaying society is, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Do you think the rioters who tear down buildings, break windows, steal things, burn, do you think they fear God? No. Apostle Paul says, that's the sign of a decaying society. They fear not God. I think the Lord is using recent events to get our attention like he never has before. So does God have your attention yet? Healthy fear can drive us to the Lord for refuge and strength. Jesus said we should fear the one who can destroy both our soul and our body in hell. God doesn't want us to live in constant anxiety. He doesn't want his children to live nervous lives any more than a compassionate earthly father wants his kids to worry about what's for supper. Did you realize there are 365 fear knots in the Bible? That's one for every day. Someone said, worry is a sin because it calls God a liar. Did you get that? Worry is a sin because it calls God a liar. God promises, I will provide all your needs. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Worry says, I don't believe those promises are true. Two or three weeks ago, I was feeling really bad, really depressed and discouraged. And I subscribed to Bob Russell. And so in my email, I got this letter from him. And it has five questions. Answer the five questions, it helps you cope. And so I wrote and asked him. He gave me permission to share these five questions with you, hoping that they helped you as they helped me. So you need a piece of paper and a pencil. Write down these questions. And when we're all done, Go in your room and shut the door and answer the questions. First one, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? What's the worst thing that could possibly happen? Some counselors suggest, just put your fears out of your mind. Don't think about them. That's impossible for me. I'm better off facing the worst and then putting it to rest. Even if the odds are slim, <clears throat> <clears throat> the truth is, I could get coronavirus and die. My doctor told me that if I got it, I wouldn't live because of the condition of my lungs right now. The economy could collapse, and we could lose all our earthly possessions. Our government system could be destroyed and be replaced with socialism 
which is the first step to communism. When Queen Esther was asked to petition the king on behalf of the Hebrew people, she was afraid of what could happen to her. But then she responded, I quote her, if I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. She faced the worst and then proceeded with courage. You see, courage is not the absence of fear. It's an appropriate action in spite of the fear. The second question, write this down. If the worst happens, how will I cope? Will I run and hide? No. Will I take my own life? No. Will I abandon my faith? No. The Bible assures me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 verse 13. So I will go on. I will continue to believe in Jesus and trust his word. I'll still be close to my family and friends, maybe even closer because of all this. I will have the hope of heaven. That means the best is yet to be regardless of what happens. King David wrote in Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, never present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Psalm 46, first two verses. When God put Joshua in charge of leading the Israelites into uncertain territory, he challenged him. Joshua 1, verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I've underlined that verse in my Bible. You should underline it in yours too, or print it and put it on your refrigerator. Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Remind yourself, if the worst happens, I will respond with faith, not fear. I'll be strong and courageous, I will set a positive example for my children and my family. If other believers have coped with even more terrifying circumstances than this, with the help of God's Holy Spirit, I can do it too. The third question, write this down. What is God's will for me today? What is God's will for me today? Jesus answered that question. He said, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's Matthew 6, verse 34. Jesus realistically promised, in the world you're going to have trouble. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John 16, verse 33. God doesn't want me to waste even one minute worrying about tomorrow. He wants me to focus on the day and cheerfully make the most of it and take one day at a time. Jesus asked, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Matthew 6, verse 27. Corey Ten Boom said, worrying is carrying tomorrow's load with today's strength, carrying two days at once. It is moving in tomorrow ahead of time. So don't do that. Worry doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. So get busy living and enjoying today. Focus on the precious presence. That's all you've got. Don't waste it. Say with King David, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You've heard me quote that many times. Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Underlying that one, question number four, what am I most thankful for right now? The Bible tells us to give thanks in all circumstances. Don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything with thanksgiving, and the peace of God will guide your hearts in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. 
There's something about listing our blessings that reminds us of God's goodness and help to overcome our fears. Anne Vosick wrote a best-selling book entitled 1,000 Gifts, A Dare to Live Fully Right Where You Are. That's the title of that book. Anne suggests we list a thousand things we're thankful for. If you list a thousand or even a hundred ways God has been good to you, somehow you sense his providential care and the uncertainties and the what ifs don't seem nearly as significant when you count your blessings. The fifth question, write this down. Do I believe what I say I believe? Do I believe it? For years I've said, I believe that whosoever believes in Christ will not perish, but have everlasting life. I've said, I believe in heaven. I've said, I believe God's promises are true, that he will never leave me nor forsake me. I preach that I believe God will grant me strength through the Holy Spirit to deal with any situations that arise. Do you know the best thing about bad times? In bad times is when you learn whether your faith is real or just a religious ornament you wore at church to be accepted by church people. Bad times, you will find out whether your faith is real. I ask myself, do I really believe these things? Once I reaffirm them, I say to myself, quit moping around, feeling sorry for yourself, and act like you believe it. God is in control, not you. Be joyful and be confident in God's word. I read that on the average, birds eat approximately half their body weight every day. If we ate that much, our grocery bill would be enormous, and so would our waistline. Birds eat a lot, but I've never seen an extra bird, a skinny bird, have you? And I've never watched a bird pace the limb at night worrying about whether there'll be enough worms in the yard tomorrow to keep it alive. The birds sleep peacefully, confident that God will supply every need one day at a time. Listen closely as the Lord Jesus asks you this question. The Lord asks you this. Matthew 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? It's Matthew 6, verse 26. I believe the Lord is asking you these questions. I'm going to go over them again because I want you to take them home. What's the worst thing that could possibly happen? If the worst happens, how will you cope? What is God's will for me today? What am I most thankful for? Do I believe what I say I believe? I'm sharing these with you because it helped me. They don't resolve anything. They don't fix anything. What do they do? They help you cope with everything. It helped me. It would help you. Let us pray. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. May the Lord bless us and keep us forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. I would love it if you'd leave a comment after this program. I'd like to read your comments. God bless you. Thank you. Amen.